Thanks so much for being here, guys. Um, like Alicia said, my name's Micah Smith. Um, first, I'd like to start by thanking you guys for being here. Uh, I'd like to thank Alicia and Creative Mornings for uh, asking me to come. And I also would like to thank Endeavor, such a cool space, for letting us, uh, let us, letting us use their space for, for today. I'm going to set my water down right there. And hopefully I don't spill that. All right, so failure, that's fun. Uh, start out the weekend right and talk about failure, but hopefully I can put a good spin on it. So, but before that, I can't imagine all of you know who I am, so I'm gonna do just a brief recap on what I do and just some things I've done in the past. So, I got started in the music industry um, doing merchandise. Wilco's been a client for, um, past few years, along with St. Vincent, done work for Jamie Collum over the years. I got into the um, gig poster game, and that was for Feist. Uh, I don't know if you know the MySpace Secret Shows program, but I did the posters for those with my friends at Valhalla for, oh, about five years. So, am I getting some feedback? Is everybody, does it sound okay? Okay. Um, another MySpace poster, that was for Dinosaur Jr., Mastodon. Also got into um, some packaging, so was lucky to do the Get Up Kids reunion album. Some more packaging. And moved to Nashville about three years ago, and I've been lucky to work with some institutions here in town, like the Country Music Hall of Fame. Uh, so did this. Snow cone logo for some friends. And uh, this benefit poster for the Bell Court had a benefit at Imogene and Willie's a few years ago. I knocked that out for them, which is fun. Uh, did this brand collab with my friends at JNHP of Fashion. They do uh, custom suits and clothes over in East Nashville. And some recent work. Did this for Taco Bell for their launching a breakfast food, so I don't know if that's been successful, but, you know. It's weird drawing breakfast food, especially whenever it's not normal. Like, that looks weird, you know? But, yeah, they liked it. Uh, illustration in GQ, and I've done the branding for the last two TED conferences. This for their 30th anniversary in Vancouver, and their one coming up in Rio, so, in October. But before all that, I'm going to jump back to the beginning, to my first failure. And it's my first job at Subway. I was 15 years old, and there was a subway across the street from, uh, from my junior high in Kansas City. And uh, I had a buddy, uh, my buddy Aaron, worked there. So he's like, hey, come work at Subway. I was like, great, just make sandwiches after school, whatever, see if this works out. So I go in, uh, my first day, they give me my purple shirt, and I, I tried to find, you know how it used to be purple, the Subway logo? I couldn't find anything purple, so they've done a great job of like getting rid of that old look, because you know, Google image search, that's all that came up. So anyway, I get my purple shirt, uh, and the first day, you know, it's easy, they're just, you know, this is how you change out the vegetables, this is how you make bread, you know, just, we'll get in the sandwich and everything later, so. Nailed that, killed it. Went in the next day. I think they showed me how to make a ham sandwich. I don't know, that might have taken the whole time, but that's, you know, at, that ex at that point, that's all I learned. So I go in for my third day. It's me and this other girl. I went in a little bit later, it was like right before dinner. I was like, okay, they're gonna train me on the dinner rush. Sounds great. So about an hour before the dinner rush started, the other girl that was working there with me was like, okay, See you later, I'm gone. 
And I was like, well, hold on a second. Uh, I'm the only one here, and dinner is about to start, and I don't know how to do anything. And she was like, well, I am a part-time Subway employee, so I don't really care. And I was like, <laughs> Noted. Okay. So I just, I'm like, everything's fine. There's an emergency phone list. By the phone, I'll just start calling people. So I call the owner, can't get a hold of them, no surprise. They left a guy on his third day alone, you know, uh, during the dinner rush on his third day. So I just start going to the emergency list, and, you know, it's astounding, but I came to the quick conclusion that, you know, part time subway employees don't really care that it's your third day and want to come in on their day off. So I, uh, I found myself with about 15 minutes till seven, not knowing how to make anything other than a ham sandwich, and a line starts to grow. So I go to the line and I, just, I had to make this, oh, hold on, let me back up real quick. I called my dad, cause you know, <laughs> I'm 15 and I'm like, what do I do? So you call your dad and I'm like, just come get me. This is gonna be bad. And, <laughs> And he's, and he's, and you know, being the, the wise father he is, he's like, we're liable for this store. You don't have keys or anything. Just keep your head down and just muscle through it till someone comes in. And I was like, yeah, that's not why I called you. You know, that's, that's not what I wanted to hear. So, uh, so then I go to the line and I just apologize right off the bat. I'm like, this is my third day. I don't know what I'm doing. And, you know, Again, you've been to fast food restaurants. How do we treat these people? Not well. They're like, I don't care. I want my sandwich. So they tell me a sandwich. I, of course, have no idea how to make it. So we, I just go through the line and just make something that resembles what they want. And then I get to the register. I haven't even thought about the register yet. I never even looked at the register. And, you, and you know, in, in the movies, you think, oh, you just enter numbers, and it, the thing opens. I couldn't even get the thing to open for the cash. So I'm just pressing buttons. There's no numbers. It's all just hieroglyphics for something I haven't learned yet. So I think she ordered a six inch sub of some sort. And I tried to ring that up. It came to like $33. And I knew that's probably not right, even though it's just my third day. And I was like, you know what? There's your free sandwich. So for the next two hours, I just made something like people wanted and then just gave it away. For free. <laughs> so I'm sure their take that night was less than average. But, um, but yeah, then someone came in and I wasn't even due to be off yet, but I was like, hey, I'm leaving. You actually know how to do this, so I'm gone. So uh, I remember it was really funny. I went in the next day, I turned in my purple shirt. I was like, yeah, it's not for me. Uh, but that was an early lesson to me in that you can still fail in things and it's not even really your, your fault. You know, sometimes it's just a bad situation. So, you know, and I think we've all been there. It's the wrong place, wrong time, right place, wrong time, whatever that concoction is, you can still fail. So um, from there, I got over it. You know, my aspirations to make Subway sandwiches got past me. But I finished high school, went to college, and I interned at a place called Asterix Studios. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them, but they're known by Invisible Creature now. Really learned a lot about what I do now from those guys um, up in Seattle. Uh, went back home to Kansas City to finish college after uh, interning with them, and they put me in touch with a place called Blue Collar Press. Uh, which is a screen printing shop owned by a bunch of bands in Kansas City. So finishing school and working at this place, it, it's just a dream job, you know. I didn't make any money, hardly, but the, the company was owned by, I don't know if you're familiar with the Get Up Kids or the Anniversary or Coalesce, but these are all bands I went and saw, you know, in high school and college. So it was just a dream to, like, get to work with those guys every day. I didn't mean, we played Knockout for lunch. It was like recess, you know. But such a, such a fun time. So it was at Blue Collar that I got into the gig posters. And we just started small and we're doing them for just local bands. And then touring bands started taking notice. And they were asking us to do them for other dates or for local Kansas City dates. And then MySpace called us after we'd only done like a handful of posters. But I, um, 
a, a mutual friend in LA said, hey, Blue Collar does posters. So they just cold called us and we started doing this series for them. So I didn't work at Blue Collar much long or too long after that started. I started working at a, boutique, a little boutique agency in Kansas City. And that's where my next big failure happened. I had lots of failures in between these, but I'm just kind of highlighting the big ones. So uh, it was at this boutique agency that there was a, uh, a, a AIGA talk or something like this, but it was with Art Chantry. I don't know how many people know who Art Chantry is. So for those of you who don't know, he was the creative director at Sub Pop in the late 80s, early 90s. So, you know, when grunge happened, he, he's the one that made it look like it does. So uh, one of my favorite stories uh, Art tells is that for Nirvana's first EP, well, let me back up. Seattle has a big, uh, or they used to, Norwegian population. So he, whenever he got the artwork and, and all the details for Nirvana's first EP, he spelled Kurt's name K-U-R-D-T. And Kurt found this amusing so much that that's whenever he signed autographs for the rest of his life, that's how he spelled his name. So I just always thought that was a cool story. Um, but yeah, so uh, we had, there was a talk in Kansas City that Art spoke at. And um, let me just show you a little bit of his work before we get into that. So this was actually in the Louvre, a screen printed poster. That's how cool he is. Um, but yeah, it's just amazing work. I mean, I wish I would have done that. It's just awesome. It's just amazing. It's just this classic Tina Turner poster. This Breeders poster is just the best. So if anybody ever runs into one of those, let me know. I'd pay Doc Dollar for it. Uh, so Art spoke, and the company I worked at uh, sponsored the meet and greet. And so I was speaking to Art, and somehow or another he said he'd heard of me. And so I was on cloud nine, and I was like, this is amazing. I was only maybe like 23 or 24, but I was like, I've made Art Chantry's heard of me, you know? <laughs> But uh, you know, all that means is he might have run across my name on a forum on gig posters or something. You know, looking back now, but at the time, it was awesome. So we started chatting. I told I was telling him about this MySpace series that I was kind of curating in charge of, and uh, I was like, I'd love to get you in on it. Maybe we could collab on something. And he was like, Yeah, I don't do that. And I was like, oh, Okay, that's cool. You know. <laughs> but uh, you know. Just think about it. So I got his email, and we, we kind of kept in touch over the next few months. And I think I got on his good side, and finally he was like, he said, hey, that thing you told me about, I'm in. Let's do it. And I was like, OK, this is amazing. I'm going to work on a poster with Art Chantry. So that's what I thought. So he, uh, we, and these MySpace shows, crazy turnaround. Uh, they were secret shows, so we only found out of them maybe a week, usually two at the most, but usually it was about a week in advance. They'd say, here's the band, here's the venue, we need art and about 500 to 1,000 of these posters screen printed in about a week's time, which is a crazy turnaround uh, if you know anything about screen printing. So uh, a job came in and I said, Art, here's the next one, uh, what do you want to do? So he sent me this image. Just an old clip art of a go-go girl or something. And he just kind of art directed me. He said, OK, take this. He's like, I want you to mirror that. I was like, all right. He's like, mirror it and maybe just put some interesting type on top of it and just kind of play with it and see what happens. So, so I took that, you know, I kind of added some color, multiplied it. And already a lot's happening. You know, I wasn't liking it. Put some type on it. It's getting there. It's OK, why don't I stack that tight? Maybe add some grit to it, you know? Still playing with the colors a little bit. Landed on this, and I was like, OK, I'm kind of liking those colors. So I sent that to him. And he was like, yeah, OK, I'm kind of digging this look. But I thought I said um, interesting type. And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Because that's, you know, I didn't, that was just for place. And, you know. <laughs> I thought I was done, you know, but, and that's another thing, you know, 
don't act cool. I was like, oh yeah, that was, you know, I'm not cool, maybe you are, but just say, oh, I'll do it again, you know, but, you know, whatever. So uh, I did another try, I was like, okay, why don't I use something classic like Rockwell, you know, and I do a blue flood behind it, you know, uh, but it still just didn't pop enough. You know, we were conversing back and forth at this point. He's like, he just needs to pop more. I was like, well, you know, there's two girls. Why not add another one? Make it white, turn her upside down. I was like, yeah, this is it. He was like, he's like, done, let's do it. So his thought was, and, and this, you'll have to look into art a little bit more, but he really loves doing things kind of differently. Um, like, I remember he, one of his posters, he actually screen printed sheet metal to look like road signs, and they took them all out and shot them with guns to look like they were, you know, real backwoods road signs. So he was, his idea was, uh, I don't remember how he said this exactly, he was like, he's like, all right, just print a stack of these in squares, get a couple six packs of beer, you and some buddies just cut these in circles. And I was like, just hand cut them or die cut them? He's like, no, just hand cut them. He's like, it won't take long, just drink some beer. And I was like, well, we kind of do a lot of these, man, and it's kind of a process, and we've been doing it. He was like, I don't really care about anything you're saying. I was like, no, no. <laughs> so I went to MySpace with the idea, and they are like, yeah, that's not going to happen. I was like, okay. So I, I was like, well, what about this? this uh, just having it as a square, and they are like, oh, no. That's not going to work. And I was like, well, why? And they're like, well, all our posters are uniform. They've all been 18 by 24, like this. And I was like, OK, well, I gave, you know, just being the middleman, you know how this is. It sucks, you know, just having to go back and forth like that. So I go, I send this to Art, and he's like, whatever. It's your poster, you know. It's, he's like, you, the stack you send me, I'm cutting into circles. And I was like, OK. <laughs> whatever. So I was like, okay, so art's fine. So I sent it to MySpace, and they were like, okay, one last problem. Uh, it can't say Art Chantry or have his logo on it. And I was like, whoa, uh, what? And they were like, yeah, the sponsors, their corporate lawyers, have to approve all logos that go on these posters. And I was like, well, he's not going to like that. And, and they were like, well, you know, sorry, you know, we, we pay you for this. Whoever you get to work on this, it's not our problem. And it's like, okay. So at this point, there's only maybe like three days until the show, and we still have to print these things. So, you know, I go to art, and I'm like, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they don't want you to have your name or logo on it. He's like, yeah, that's cool. You just can't use it. And I was like, great. This is going just like I thought it would. <laughs> So we go back and forth, try to figure things out, and it's just not happening. And so at this point, I have the client mad at me. I have the, my job, the agency I was at, are just like, what are you doing? You're screwing this up on both ends with this legend designer and the client. And uh, Art's definitely not happy because I've wasted his time. So like any kid right out of school, I thought, well, I'll just take tomorrow off because it just won't be my problem then. So I took the next day off. <laughs> I learned that uh, real quick that it's still a problem. <laughs> so I still had people calling, and I was like, okay, well, uh, you know, there's no home base at work. He was like, well, I'm touching home. You can't bother me. <laughs> so uh, I go into the next day, and I try to just wrap things up with, with art as best as possible because as of right now, I gotta turn a poster around in a day so the printer can start that night and just print all night basically. So uh, I, this is what we ended up with, which you know is fine. It's nothing, you know, like like that was just like awesome, you know. It's just totally cool, you know, and what I wanted to end up doing. But you know, considering the time and what we did and getting it to turn around, I'm happy. So as far as failure, it's one of those things where, here's the deal. We, we went to art and we tried to, I mean, we even printed a few extra prints, you know, just trying to, to make amends. And, you know, I'm sure he still has a, a sore spot, which rightly so, but he, 
it, what I should have done was focus on B, C, D, E, instead of just going from A to F. You know, there's, there's always going to be those questions. Like, I, I, I was mad and, you know, and being young, saying, well, you know, I showed this to MySpace so many times with this name on it, why didn't they, you know, but that's never the way to do it. This was my baby. You know, you can't really pass the buck. It's, it's what, it's what we do, you know, those in-between steps that kind of say, this is who I am. It doesn't matter if it's a cool-looking poster, you know. It's, it's how we get there and it's, we actually get it done is, is whether or not it's a success or a failure. But I was down for probably, I don't know, a week after that. It's not like right after the fact I was like, well, here's the lesson I learned on, you know, failure is part of the process. It sucked for probably about, yeah, about a week. And I finally just was, I was asking myself the question, you know, it, should I just not be ambitious? Should I not do these things that I want to do? And I, did, I, I finally just came to that conclusion that, you know, it's awesome that I got to do a poster with Art Chantry. You know, it's not that... I, it's not that I wanted to fail, but it was just part of becoming who I am. So I'm, I'm not trying to say that there aren't situations where failure always sucks. Like both of these situations, it's like, we came up with a poster. It could have it could have been where MySpace was like there wasn't even a poster for the show, and that would have been a complete failure. Both of these situations, it's like you know I didn't work at Subway. That's probably actually a success, you know. <laughs> but but I guess what I, in the end what I'm trying to say is like failure just isn't really failure in what we do. You know, if, if I was talking to West Point or something, it'd be a totally, not that I should talk to West Point. It's like there's life and death, you know, with certain crowds, but it's like no one's dying with, with what we do. So it is true whenever some, who, who was it? The, the quote beforehand? Meg, the quote on her page. It's like, you have to enjoy that process. And, you know, I haven't, uh, both of these, during, while they were happening, you know, the subway story, that, that was awful while it was happening, but it's a funny story now. And also, the art story, that was terrible while it was happening, but at the end, I'm like, man, I got to do a poster with Art Chantry. So, I guess, all in all, failure just isn't failure. It's not, it's the not trying that's the real failure. So that's, that's what I've learned from all this. So, but don't take it from me. I'm just a failed Subway sandwich artist. <laughs> Thanks.